Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 again today, and uh, there's yet another way to use the AI Sky replacement filter here. Uh, and that's, um, I, you know, I have to admit, this is not my idea. A gentleman left a comment on one of my previous AI Sky uh, replacement videos. And in fact, I'll just show you the comment. Here it is. And he's like, you know, hey, that's cool. Um, and I talked about it has to be a JPEG, that sort of thing. He's like, what if it's not totally sky? Uh, he apparently goes and takes brackets of shots, right? So this is going out, taking brackets, um, which is like, you know, bracketed exposures, like a dark, a medium, and a light. And then you usually blend them together, like, let's say, in Aurora HDR and make an HDR photo. Other people uh, may not be making HDRs, but they might be taking bracketed shots. And what they'll do is an exposure blend where maybe you take two exposures, let's say one exposure for the foreground, and in that case, the sky is probably kind of blown out. Um, and then you take an exposure for the sky, in which case the foreground is probably a little too dark. And then what you do is you stick those together, right? So you use the, the well-exposed sky and the well-exposed foreground, stick them together, and you have a well-exposed uh, image, right? Without doing HDR, because some people want to avoid the tone mapping and that sort of thing. So anyway, what he's talking about here is he goes out and takes them, and he's like, you know, it'd be really good if I could take like a well-exposed foreground shot and a well-exposed sky shot and stick them together using AI sky replacement. In other words, use that tool to automate the exposure blend. And he wanted to know if that works. <laughs> yes, it does. It does work. Let me show you. And I'm excited. I'm like a kid in a candy store. So here's a couple of photos I found to demonstrate this technique. Here's a photo that I love the foreground, right? Pretty well lit. It was sunset. Um, the sky's a little too bright for me. And then here's the next one in my bracket set. And in this case, the foreground's too dark, but the sky looks great. Now, I could take either one of those, play around in Luminar long enough to, um, to, to make it work, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to show you some tricks. So let me get Luminar. And here we go. Here's the dark image that's in Luminar, and here's the brighter one. So I'm going to start with this as my base photo because I want to lay in the other sky. Now keep in mind, in order to use your own custom sky, which you can do, I made a video about using your own custom skies. In order to do that, that, that sky has to exist outside of Luminar and it has to be a JPEG today. Now, so what that means is I took that darker exposure and I exported it, put it on my desktop, and now I'm gonna go grab it and lay it in as the, uh, the sky replacement layer. So I went over here to my creative tab, I'm in AI Sky Replacement. I'm going to say Sky Selection, Load Custom Sky Image, and there it is. I've already got it selected on my desktop. That's the darker version of this one. And all I'm going to do is say Open. And now I recommend that you make sure you shoot these on a tripod. I know that looks messed up. I'll talk about that in a second. Make sure these are shot on a tripod because you want to make sure they line up perfectly. Um, because there's not a way to align that layer in um, in Luminar 4, you can't do it, right? It's just gonna go in. So you're gonna say, well, Jim, this doesn't look very well aligned at all, my friend, and you're right, it doesn't, it looks terrible, but that's okay. We've all just learned and seen something, and that is that when you drop a new sky in, it's not dropping that image in to completely cover the, uh, the image that it's uh, adding the sky to. It's dropping it in on top, and so that's why they have this handy dandy, happy little horizon position slider. So all you do, drag that all the way to the left, and all that did is just drop the new uh, sky layer. If you, I'm gonna call it a layer, but you're not using layers, but the sky replacement image, all it did is it moved it down, and it lines up perfectly, because guess what? I shot it on a tripod, and it lines up perfectly. So let me turn this filter off, there's the before image, brighter sky, exact same foreground, and now I'm gonna turn it back on. There it is, better sky, same foreground. Now there's some relight and things like that that have slightly changed some of the tones in the foreground, but that's cool with me. I've been able to quickly blend an exposure that I shot uh, with the intent of making an HDR, because I shot this a couple of years ago, back when I was doing a lot more HDR, but now I'm just doing exposure blends. And by the way, there it is before, and there it is, after. Now, here's the thing I've heard from a num number of people, and I totally get this, and I totally respect this opinion, even though it's not my opinion, that, and that is, hey, if you put a new sky in, that's cheating, right? Totally fine, right? I get it. It's fine if you think that. I don't think that because I think of photography as art, 
and you gotta be able to do whatever you want with your art. Now I do think if you're posting the photos uh, in portfolios and trying to sell them, I think it, sh it should be disclosed that you added a new sky, you know, from some other date or location or trip, uh, just to make the current photo look better. I feel like it's a an artist disclosure that's, um, I think it's incumbent upon us to do that, but that's my opinion. Um, however, as far as putting a new sky in, I could care, I'm happy to do it, right? So if you don't do that or don't agree with it, totally fine. However, I would like to now offer up evidence here that says, hey, you can put in a new sky that was taken the exact same day, the exact same time of day, the exact same location, and maybe one half second or one second later than you took the base photo that you're putting this guy on top of. So in other words, I don't think you're cheating anymore. You're just exposure blending a sky taken at the exact same time, same location, same everything, except for the exposure time which is maybe it's a half second later or a second later, whatever, right? You're sticking in that sky on the exact same scene. So I'm curious, if, if you're one of those that thinks it's cheating to add a new sky, do you think this is cheating? I don't think any of it's cheating, as I've already said, but I kind of challenge you to, to maybe consider that, um, uh, that it's not cheating anymore because it's the same thing, right? It's just a second later. It's just a little bit better exposure. Anyway, I'm not here to discuss... Uh, ethics or morality or whatever you want to call it in photography. My opinion is it's art, do whatever you want. Um, however, the video was about how do you do this and can you do it actually? And does the photo that you add for the sky have to be completely sky? And that answer is a resounding no. And now can you use it for exposure blending? And obviously that's a resounding yes you can my friends. It just keeps getting better. That's all I had for you. I'm gonna go edit this photo and add some more touches to it because I haven't done anything other than show you how to drop it in, which is I clicked a button. So the rest of it's been me talking. So not a lot to demonstrate other than just to show something else super cool that you can do with Luminar 4. You're gonna have it real soon. I can't wait. Hope you're excited about it. I'm excited about it and I've already got it. I'm just fired up because I want you to have it. And that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, call your mom, all those kind of things. Have a great one. I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching and adios.